there was a choice moment when uh, Emmanuel Macron walked into the main hall there. One of the reporters asked him, so do you support uh, Margaret Vestager, who's with uh, his voting bloc, the Liberal Democrats in the European Parliament? He says, yeah, Vestager's great. And then he mentioned the name of the head of the Greens, the, sorry, the head of the Social Democrats. He mentioned Michel Barnier. But of course, he didn't mention Manfred Weber. Yeah, he very pointedly didn't mention Manfred Weber. He did mention Michel Barnier, who was not one of the Spitzenkandidaten, and not one of the people put forward by the groups. And that's really the heart of this conflict. It's a conflict between Macron and Merkel at a national level, but really they're acting as proxies. Uh, Macron is trying to represent the power of the European Council, the body of the 28 national governments, whereas Merkel, in theory, is trying to stand up for the European Parliament, for their right to be able to select the next European Commission president based on the result of the election. Now, Merkel has her own reasons for doing this, because according to the normal rules of the Spitzenkandidat system, which was only introduced in 2014, the group that got the most seats in the election should get the first crack at uh, having their candidate be European Commission president. That happens to be her group, the EPP's Manfred Weber. Uh, he is not so popular here in Brussels, I have to say, and especially not popular with Macron. So it wasn't a surprise that he didn't mention him. The key thing to watch for tonight, we're not going to get an actual nominee tonight, uh, but I've heard, at least yesterday, that Macron wanted to come out of here with a short list that contained at least one name that wasn't a Spitzenkandidat, probably Michel Barnier, the EU's chief Brexit negotiator at the moment. The reason for that is so that the council could step in early and kind of throw their weight around and say, we are not going to be limited to that list of Spitzenkandidaten. We believe we can choose whoever we want. Uh, so we'll see if that short list comes about. I have to say, talking to EU sources and hearing from EU leaders as they entered here today, there does not seem to be an appetite to pick a fight with the European Parliament so early. After all, they don't even know if Manfred Weber can command a majority in the Parliament. That might be clearer by the next European Council summit in June. Yeah, so there's a battle between the EU leaders at the Council and the Parliament and a battle between uh, France and Germany. We're hearing of uh, other uh, outsiders who, who could possibly uh, be uh, coming up as p potential presidents of the European Commission to replace Jean-Claude Juncker. Yeah, there is. There are other possibilities. Another key thing to watch for tonight is if they put in the council conclusions that they're looking for executive experience that probably suggests a former prime minister. That would rule out all of the Spitzenkandidaten and also Michel Barnier. Uh, now, it just so happens that all of the previous European commissioners for, I think, 20 years have been former prime ministers. So it wouldn't be an unreasonable thing to ask. But again, it would be picking a fight with the council. Now, who might those former prime ministers be? There's been talk of the outgoing Lithuanian president, uh, who is the executive position in Lithuania, Dalia Gribiskaite. Uh, there's also talk of Mark Rutte. And even Angela Merkel herself has been thrown into the mix. So we could get a surprise name that we haven't even mentioned yet. But all of that is probably going to to become more clear at the June Council. That's where Donald Tusk, president of the Council, and Angela Merkel want to actually make the decision about who's going to be commission president. But it could be that they have to wait until the European Parliament meets for the first time in July to be really sure who could, get a com who could command a majority in the Parliament, because whoever they nominate needs that majority vote in the European Parliament. Yeah, the, the two main blocks, if you look back to the results of Sunday, Dave, they still have the most votes, but the momentum is certainly with other parties and other movements. Uh, the higher turnout means that uh, there's not much of a stomach across the EU for the likes of uh, Jose Manuel Barroso or, or Jean-Claude Juncker to be the next president. What's your feeling in terms of have the leaders who've been walking past you uh, into, the, into the summit, do they, have they taken stock of what the message is from voters across the continent.
I think everyone's kind of hedging their bets. Nobody wants to really use their political capital at this stage to pick a fight with the European Parliament. It might seem really kind of unseemly. The election was only two days ago, and there's no way that the European Parliament could have come to any kind of agreement since then. Uh, so certainly, as EU leaders were entering here, some expressed a preference for a particular candidate. For instance, Pedro Sanchez, Prime Minister of Spain, says he backs Franz Timmermans, uh, who's the socialist candidate. Candidate. Leo Varadkar, uh, the Irish Prime Minister, said that he backs uh, uh, Manfred Weber from his own party, whereas others, Luxembourg Xavier Battelle, came in saying he doesn't approve of the Spitzenkandidat process at all, and he is completely open in terms of names. Uh, so I think right now everyone's pretty open. It's really not clear who we're going to end up with here. All right, and we'll be talking about Spitzenkandidatens and wild cards in the France 24 debate. Dave Keating in Brussels, many thanks.